Good day to you all. I welcome you to CAFA Conference 2020. My name is Dr. Mocho Butau. I'm going to be ministering you today about an interesting topic, and that is that of cancer. Uh, but before I get to do so, I would like to acknowledge those that have ruled over me, um, those that are my spiritual parents, um, Archbishop uh, Dr. Asa Gurupira and Mama Gurupira. Uh, they are quite a vis they are visionaries for our ministry. Um, they stand as an anchor to this ministry. And I would like also to, to, to thank um, my spiritual parents, Dr. Prophet Samuel Chiza um, and Mama Samaria Chiza um, for their work in me. Uh, it's interesting if you read from Hebrews chapter 13, verse 17, that this, it's written says, Obey them that have rule over you and submit yourself for they watch for your souls as they must give account that they may do it with joy and not with grief, for that is unprofitable for you. So it's always interesting that there are people that God has assigned, people just like you and me, that breathe like you and me, that God has assigned to watch over our spiritual welfare. So let's jump into it. Um, so in a nutshell, what is cancer? Um, it's a disease... Um, process that reminds us of our unexpected uh, mortality um, and it frequently co compromises our vitality. Um, it's, uh, it affects every part of our being as people, emotionally, physically, even to our significant ones, the ones that we live with, the ones that, we, that care about us when this disease comes. Um, and it's, it's a disease that also consumes a lot of resources, um, socially, as well as materially. Um, so cancer is a group of diseases um, uh, characterized by uncontrolled growth and spread of abnormal cells. Uh, cancer is, um, is caused by both internal and external factors. Uh, the external factors might involve uh, chemicals, uh, radiation, even viruses. Some internal factors will involve things that um, affect you as a, as a body, um, as a person, um, like your hormones, your immune system, um, or something that you probably would have inherited from your, from your parents. Yeah? Um, some, of, uh, some of these causal factors may act together uh, in sequence, one after another, and promote a process that we, what, that we regard as carcinogenesis. Um, casino coming from the word cancer itself, and genesis coming from the word um, uh, beginning or formation. So carcinogenesis is a process whereby um, one develops cancer in general. Uh, and this process may take 10 or more years to develop um, in, in, in an individual um, uh, after exposure to, to, to genetic mutations. Um, either from birth or from, from viruses, as we mentioned earlier. Um, uh, cancer today is treated with a variety of um, modalities, whether surgery, radiation, um, and, and chemotherapy. Uh, chemotherapy being a process whereby you're actually given drugs that target the cells, that inhibits the cells to grow, um, or, or even hormones. Uh, there are some cases where Hormones are used to, 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 to reduce the disease burden. Um, and there's also what is regarded as immunotherapy, where an individual is given um, some elements of their immune system just to help boost their immune system to, to help. So several modalities, surgery, radiation, chemotherapy, hormonal, as well as immunotherapy. Just a glance of a bit of statistics Cancer is amongst the leading cause of death worldwide. Um, um, you're looking at um, probably 14.1 million new cases of cancer in a year, um, and, and 8.2 million cancer-related deaths in a single year happening. 57% of these cancer cases um, occur in less developed countries. 
Um, especially when you're looking at sub-Saharan Africa, which is where we are uh, here in Zimbabwe, it's, we are in sub-Saharan region. This is where the majority of actually uh, cancer cases occur. Um, you're, <clears throat> you're looking at probably 65% of cancer deaths occurring in Central Africa and Sub-Saharan Africa, as well as Asia um, in third world countries. Uh, the number of new cancer cases per year is expected to reach 23.6 million by the year 2020. That is a staggering number, a very scary number. But I'm not here to scare you with uh, these statistics. It's just so that you have a, a brief overview of what a burden this illness is um, to us as humanity. Um, cancer is the second leading cause of death globally, accounting for 9.6 million deaths um, in the year 2018. Um, when you look at the occurrence of cancer between men and women, you find that in men, um, you have got a lot of lung cancer, prostate cancer, colorectal cancer, stomach cancer, liver cancer. These are amongst the most common types of cancer that are occurring in men. And when you look at females, we are looking at breast cancer, colorectal cancer as well, lung cancer, cervical cancer, thyroid and thyroid cancer are um, the most common um, in women. Uh, between 30 to 50% of cancers are preventable. That's quite interesting. Um, and this is just due to healthy lifestyle choices, such as avoidance of tobacco um, and, 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 and having a good public health uh, system um, where it involves immunizations against cancer causing infections. Um, so you, you really, when you really look at it, as more cancer developed, it's an indication of how healthy um, a country or a nation's healthcare system is. Um, 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 and, and it's interesting that um, uh, this number, th almost 60% when you really look at it, um, are, is preventable and is attributed to a health, uh, health, health style uh, changes. So it means that um, most of these cancers, one can do something to prevent themselves from acquiring this, uh, these diseases. Um, tobacco, interestingly, um, is the single largest preventable cause of cancer in the world. Um, it literally is involved in a lot of cancers, lung cancer, uh, breast cancer, cervical cancer, um, endometrial cancer. So it's, it's, it really is a problem. And just not smoking is good enough to prevent you from getting this disease. Um, <clears throat> It is, uh, it is responsible for approximately 22% of all cancer-related death, tobacco. Um, other cancers are also, other cancers, um, having cancer doesn't necessarily mean that uh, um, it's the end of the world because some of these cancers, most of them, in the, uh, um, most of them um, can, be, can be cured and, and pre as well as prevented if caught early. Um, yeah, just, have, just having a look at this, at this diagram, um, just summarizing um, what I've just um, alluded to, 18.1 um, million cancer, uh, case, cases of cancer globally. Um, and when you look at uh, sub-Saharan Africa, we are looking at 5.8% of those cancers. Um, and according to these statistics, that uh, was representing close to a million uh, a million cases of cancer in sub-Saharan Africa alone. So that's quite a, a, a staggering number. That's quite a staggering number. So just to put things into pictorial perspective, um, when you have a look, if you look at lung cancer there amongst um, uh, uh, both males and females, uh, uh, taking a good chunk of 12, almost 12% and followed by, uh, by breast cancer as well, then colorectal cancer there. And, and we have prostate cancer there in males, uh, taking also a big chunk uh, of percentage, close to 7% there. So those are quite staggering numbers and quite uh, frightening numbers, really, when you look at them. Um, looking at all these statistics, 
you know, when you look at males alone, we see lung cancer and prostate cancer. We're going to chat a bit about prostate cancer. Um, we're going to chat a bit about prostate cancer in men uh, because it's a quite a big challenge, especially here in, in Zimbabwe. Um, <clears throat> if you look at females, breast cancer is the leading cause of cancer, occupying up almost close to 25%. Um, uh, and one of the most interesting cancers is um, cervical cancer. So these cancers, if detected early, can be prevented. And uh, a lot of mortality can be prevented and morbidity can be pre prevented just by early detection alone. So having a look at breast cancer, um, what are the risk factors of one uh, that predisposes one to acquire uh, breast cancer? Um, by the way, breast cancer is that cancer that affects breasts. Um, and that doesn't just mean it's, uh, it just doesn't mean it affects only females. All, also men can get breast cancer because men do have breasts, by the way, um, though the incident is higher in women. Um, if it does okay in men, it tends to be very aggressive. And uh, by aggressive, I mean it tends to be very vicious uh, when it occurs. And the mortality is even higher when if it occurs in, in men compared to women. Um, so the risk factors, what predisposes one to getting breast cancer? Um, for starters, is being a female. Being a female alone predisposes one to, to get breast cancer. Um, it tends to occur in the elderly. Um, as one grows older, uh, these mutations that we talked about, genetic mutations that we talked about, tends to accumulate with other uh, uh, disease-causing uh, organisms that creates these, oncog that creates these uh, carcinogens uh, in the body that then pre predisposes one to get um, cancer as they get older. Um, if you ever have been in an oncology or a women's clinic, you might hear of the term BRCA1, BRCA2. These are, um, uh, these are genetic, inherited genetic mutations that occur in, in, in females. Um, Early menstrual periods before the age of 12. Uh, if a woman starts her period before the age of 12, they also increase their chances of, uh, uh, of getting breast cancer or being exposed to, um, to hormones, family planning hormones up to the age of 55. So basically the longer one stays with high estrogen um, high estrogen levels in their system um, predisposes them more to getting um, disease, to getting a breast cancer. Um, so if you start your period at a young age, or if you, uh, you continue having your menses until the age of 55, generally most women, they tend to get into menopause between the age of 40 to 45 years of age. But if you then have your period until you are 55 years of age, that also predisposes one from getting breast cancer. Um, having dense breasts as well um, is, an, is, a, is, a, is a risk factor. Uh, dense breasts have more connective tissue in them. Uh, that is fatty tissue uh, and can sometimes make it hard uh, for one to detect breast cancer in, in those breasts. Uh, either through a mammogram, which is a special test that is done uh, for breast cancer screening. Um, it will be very difficult for the specialist to identify the cancer if you have got a heavy, dense breast, thereby predisposing one to getting, uh, to have delayed diagnosis and, and having um, worse outcomes uh, with breast cancer. Um, if one has had a history of breast cancer as well in one breast, um, it also gives a higher chance of having cancer in the other breast as well. Um, if you have family members that have suffered from breast cancer, uh, either your, bra your, 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 your sister or your mother have had breast cancer, that also predisposes you to having breast cancer as well. Um, Long ago, there was, a dis there was a drug that was used uh, to prevent uh, miscarriages in men that was called uh, um, dithyostilbestro. 
So women that way, this drug has since been con um, has since been banned, but women that were exposed to this drug uh, if had in their in their in their late years they have started developing breast cancer. So those women that were born in the 1940s to 1971 era that tend to have used this drug are also at a higher risk of, of, of uh, developing breast cancer um, as well. Um, not being physically active has also been linked to, to breast cancer. So one ought to, to exercise uh, and live a healthy lifestyle. Um, generally, we recommend people to exercise actively two hours, uh, two or twi two, twice or three times a week. Um, um, that would be good for your body and just reduces your chances of having breast cancer. Um, therefore, being overweight um, or obese also predisposes you to getting breast cancer. Why? Because estrogen levels are high if you're obese, um, generally. Your estrogen levels are high. So if you are a male person and you tend to be obese or overweight, there are higher estrogen levels. You can see fat guys, they tend to have bigger breasts than lean, thin guys. Uh, this is all because of the gynecomastia that occurs there, uh, where males end up developing bigger breasts simply because as you gain fat, you, or your estrogen levels, they go higher. Um, taking hormonal therapy as well, your estrogens as uh, in contraceptives, as well as what is called hormonal replacement therapy, uh, that is a treatment used also to prevent other diseases in the elderly, like osteoporosis, um, uh, where your bones become very quite brittle. Uh, it, unfortunately, that also predisposes you to getting breast cancer as well. Um, Reproductive history, if one has had um, um, their first child before the age of 30, that also predisposes you to get breast cancer. So uh, if, we, if you're a woman and you are planning to, to, to bear children, it's better you bear the children before the age of, um, <clears throat> it's better you bear the, your, 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 your children um, uh, early on, um, as well as, uh, 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 we encourage breastfeeding because if you don't breastfeed, that also uh, studies have been done that have shown that women that tend to breastfeed and women that do not breastfeed, the ones that tend to breastfeed have got lesser chances of getting breast cancer. Um, alcohol, drinking alcohol also um, predisposes one to getting breast cancer um, because it messes up your hormones as well, especially your estrogen levels as well. If you see men who are alcoholics, they also tend to have uh, breasts uh, uh, because of the high estrogen levels that would be in their, in their system. So what are the signs? So what are the signs? What are the signs to watch out for? Um, in terms of, remember what we say that if one detects this disease early, therefore the chances of surviving breast cancer um, is higher. So what are the symptoms? Swelling is the first symptom, um, is a common symptom actually. Um, swelling in any part of the breast. Uh, so if you see any lump in your breast, better visit your nearest doctor uh, and, and have him check a look at it. There are other diseases that can cause lumps in the breast, um, but one has to be careful to find out which, um, whether this disease is not cancer. And the only way to do so is having it tested. Skin irritation, skin irritation on the breasts and uh, dimpling of the breasts um, also uh, is a sign. Dimpling, have you, have you ever seen an orange? Um, you see this dimples on the peel of the orange. That's the kind of dimpling that we are, we are talking about. Um, unfortunately, this sign is actually a late, one of the late signs. By the time you see such dimpling, usually it will be, uh, the disease would have been uh, a bit more advanced. Breast pain as well. Um, if one experiences constant breast pain um, without any history of trauma to the breast, um, that is also a sign uh, and a symptom. Um, uh, nipple pain um, or nipple uh, discharge um, also is a, is, is a sign. Um, 
sometimes if so there's unless some women are, are born with abnormal nipples or unusual nipples but if your nipples tend to start turning inward when they were usually not like that then that is a cause of concern you, you have to go see a doctor about it if you see any redness or a thickening of these nipples as well uh, you should visit your doctor unless maybe if you're breastfeeding um, um, the other thing that is also a late sign is, is a lump in the armpit. If you, if you tend to feel lumps in your armpit, um, just have a doctor check it out. And um, there are so many causes of lumps in the, in the armpits, but one has to be, to, to err, it's better to err on caution and have that lump checked out by your uh, nearest physician. So um, we, we normally encourage women um, to do what is called a self-breast exam. A self-breast exam, um, we encourage women to do this every month. Every month, every woman should know how to do a self-breast exam. Um, in a self-breast exam, basically, uh, we encourage that the woman picks maybe the, the days they start their period to do this exam so that it, you have a, a sort of consistency in it. So we encourage women to you stand in the mirror and you look at your breasts, you just look and see if they are normal, if they are symmetrical, if the left one is the same as the, as the right one. Then you put your arm on the, on the waist and you press them down. And you'll be looking to see if there is any dimpling or any lumps that pops up. And you raise your arms like this whilst you're looking at your breast in the mirror. If you see an abnormal movement or abnormal contouring in your breast, um, that is also a cause of concern. Then after that, you take one arm, the right arm examines the, the left breast. So you'll be examining the breast with the palm of your, uh, with the palm of your hand, not necessarily feeling with the tips of your fingers, but with the palms. So you examine the breast starting from, from, from inside. You examine the breast and you feel any lumps, you go below, you examine few lumps, you go a bit outward, you feel any, if there are any lumps, you go a, a bit out and out, you feel any lumps as well. And then you, you feel also at the center where the nipple is, you see if there's any lumps. Then you, you put your hand in your armpits and you feel also if there's any lumps. And you do the same to the other right side as well. You go up, down, a bit out, down, then up on the outer or down, then around the nipple and in your armpits. And just by doing that, you have actually done a self breast exam. And we encourage every woman to be able to do this. Every woman should be able to do a self breast exam. That's the one single tool that is proved to help prevent a lot of morbidity and a lot of mortality as far as breast cancer is concerned. The other thing is that one is able to do is to, uh, to follow a healthy lifestyle eat healthy, stay active, exercise regularly. And if you are smoking, stop smoking. Uh, remember, by the way, smoking not only affects you, it also as affects the ones that you stay with. Um, so it's not just about you smoking, it's you are smoking in the presence of others. If someone can smell that you have been smoking, then they have actually been exposing them to uh, the 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 cancer causing elements that are in smoke as well. So stop smoking. Drink al alcohol in moderation. Um, that's what we tell patients to drink alcohol in moderation. It's always difficult to, to define what is moderation to yourself. So it's, overall it's better to just not drink at all. Uh, but if you can't afford not to drink at all, at least drink in moderation. Whatever moderation is to you, uh, it's, it's a question of, uh, to, to debate about. Um, try to have your children before the age of 30, if possible, and breastfeed your children. Yeah, that will help as well. So the treatment modalities for breast cancer involve surgery, where the lump either is cut out, um, or the breast itself is cut out, depending on the degree of severity of the breast cancer. Radiotherapy, where some radiation is put to the breast to help shrink 
uh, the cancer cells. Or chemotherapy, whereby you drink some medication um, to get rid of the disease. Or hormonal therapy, where your hormones are pumped into you uh, in, in order to reduce the disease burden um, as well. That's it about breast cancer. Let's move on to cervical cancer. Cervical cancer is the second most leading causing cancer here, especially here in Zimbabwe and Sub-Saharan Africa, and generally in the world, world all over. Cervical cancer developed in women on the women's cervix. The cervix is that entrance to the uterus from the vagina. That's where the uterus, where the vagina ends and the uterus starts, that's uh, opening. That's what we call the, the cervix. Almost all cervical cancer cases, um, almost 99% are linked to infection with a high risk um, human papilloma virus or HPV virus. 99% of all cancer, almost all cancers of the cervix are linked to this virus. Um, so that's a good thing because um, at least we are able to immunize against this virus. We are also able to test someone this, um, for presence of this virus. So we'll talk more about that. In, this is an extremely common virus uh, uh, and it is mostly sexually transmitted. Uh, this uh, HPV virus, the human papilloma virus. In 2018, an estimated of, of, of 590,000 women were diagnosed with cervical cancer worldwide, and 311,000 women died from this disease. Those are astounding numbers. Those are astounding numbers. So who is at risk? Smoking as well, number one, cause uh, risk. Uh, illiteracy, uh, it's interesting that illiteracy is regarded as a risk for breast cancer. So you find out the more you know about this, um, so cervical cancer, sorry. The more you know about cervical cancer, uh, the, the, the better off, uh, the, the less likely you, you are to, 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 to contract it. Uh, not maintaining good personal hygiene, um, uh, residents in a rural area, um, has been has been has been associated with that simply because of um, poor hygiene and poor health seeking um, tendencies, as well as uh, poor health infrastructure in rural areas. Uh, increased use of an old cloth um, in as you, as an alternative to pads during one cycle, menstrual cycle, uh, and early marriages. Uh, so you find out early marriage is very co common in, in, rural, in girls in rural areas as well. Uh, not washing one's genitalia um, after sexual intercourse also has been linked to, um, to, to, to cervical cancer. Um, having a husband who has got multiple sexual partners predisposes one, increases one's chances of getting that HPV virus that we talked about. Um, even having a history of recurrent uh, sexually transmitted infections also increases one's chances uh, of getting um, um, uh, cervical cancer. Uh, so lack of knowledge about screening of cervical cancer also. So every woman needs to know what needs to be done as far as screening and detecting uh, breast cancer. Um, having a look at this diagram, um, just to indicate to you where the cervix is. Uh, so this is the, um, this diagram represents the uterus of a woman. The inside here is where the baby grows in. So in this part here, this opening here is the vagina. Right at the end of the vagina, there's this uh, lump here. That's where the uterus starts. So this is the cervix that we are talking about. This is the cervix that we are talking about. So screening, um, cervical cancer screening um, has helped a lot in preventing and reducing uh, the disease burden itself. And we encourage this screening to start from, um, <clears throat> we, we encourage uh, cervical cancer screening to start from the age of 21. So every woman from the age of 21 has to have a cervical cancer screen. And screening involving having what is called a pap smear 
Uh, this pap smear is whereby the doctor takes a sample of that cervix. There is a special instrument that they use to swipe some cells of that cervix. And then having a pathologist look at those, in those uh, cells to see if they are abnormal. So any abnormalities that, that signify uh, the beginning of cancer uh, uh, then warrants uh, some other measures to be taken in terms of preventing one from getting a full-blown uh, case of cervical cancer. Um, there's also HPV test, uh, tests where we test the human papilloma virus itself. Um, here in Zimbabwe, we developed a, a special and low cost effective test that have actually helped our women here in Zimbabwe. That is called um, uh, VIAC. I'm sure most women that have given birth, uh, especially in the last uh, 10 years, uh, have heard about this test, VIAC, uh, meaning visual inspection with acetic acid in camera, whereby um, some acetic acid, which is basically your, your vinegar, uh, acetic acid is basically your vinegar is put on the cervix and um, uh, a nurse or a doctor takes a photo of the cervix. And from that photo, one is able to detect the chances of having abnormal cells. So if there is abnormalities, a pap smear is then recommended to be done. So VIAC is actually offered for free here in Zimbabwe for every woman. If you go to um, any central hospital, they'll be able to provide this service for free. So we encourage you, every woman from the age of 21 to have cervical cancer screening. If you can afford a pap smear, you better just go and, and have a, a VIAC done. Um, there is a vaccine for the HPV virus. And this vaccine helps prevent uh, women from getting cervical cancer. It reduces the chances of women from contracting this infection. And we encourage that uh, women, from, uh, young girls from as young as 11, 12 years of age be vaccinated from this. Um, this is something that most um, of us in Zimbabwe are not aware about, that most of our girls, they just grow up until they are sexually active without knowing that there's such a vaccine. So there's such a vaccine called the HPV vaccine. Talk to your doctor about it, and uh, you can uh, recommend that your child gets it. Uh, and it helps prevent one from getting um, uh, cervical cancer before they are sexually active. Um, some can even go as young as nine years of age to get this vaccine. Um, yeah. Um, the HPV vaccine prevents against new infections, but does not treat existing infections or diseases. So the vaccine is not for treatment, it's for prevention measures. Uh, this is why HPV vaccine works best when given before HPV exposure, that's uh, before sexual intercourse. Uh, you should get screened for cervical cancer regularly, even if you have received the HPV vaccine. So just receiving the vaccine doesn't necessarily dis uh, disqualifies you from having cervical cancer screen, doesn't disqualify you from getting a pap smear, doesn't disqualify you from getting an HPV test, doesn't uh, disqualify you from getting a VIAC test. So just having the vaccine reduces your chances of getting cervical cancer, but does not treat uh, disease. So what are the signs and symptoms? So the early stage cervical cancer generally produces no signs or symptoms at all. Early stage cervical cancer produces no signs or symptoms. So that means that the screening is the most important. Uh, if you don't get screened, by the time you develop symptoms, the disease will be in advanced stage. Um, so the other signs will be vaginal bleeding after intercourse uh, or be in between periods um, or vaginal bleeding after menopause. Women generally, when they get to the age of uh, 40 to 50, their menses stop, their cycles, their monthly flows stop. But if that after, suppose your monthly cycle stopped at the age of 55, of age 50, and then later on when you're in your 60s, you start seeing blood flow again, um, you have to go and have your doctor check for cervical cancer, as well as what is called endometrial cancer uh, in any women that is starting to have bleeding after menopause. Pelvic pain, pain just below your belly button. 
just pain just below your belly button uh, is also uh, uh, or a pain after or during intercourse also warrants to have a doctor to have a look at you. Treatment um, involves um, removal of either the precancer uh, cervix only, or uh, the precancer cells only, or the cervix only, or the whole uterus, depending on the stage of the disease. So you find out that if you if the precancerous cells are detected early from a pap smear, you can actually just have the uh, the cancer cells removed only. There are various methods that are used, laser, um, um, uh, that can be used, some um, um, uh, uh, frozen carbon dioxide can be used. Uh, there are various methods that can be used to, to just to remove that. And bi biopsies of the cervix only can be done just to remove the cervix alone. But if it's now in advanced stage, one can have the whole uterus and the ovaries removed. Chemotherapy and radiotherapy also are modalities that are used in managing the disease. Coming on to men, um, men, as we mentioned earlier, prostate cancer is one of the common causes of, of cancer and is preventable. Uh, prostate cancer occurs in the prostate in men. Uh, this prostate is, um, is a small uh, walnut-shaped gland found in men that produces seminal fluid uh, that nourishes and transports sperm um, during ejaculation in, in, in a man. Uh, prostate cancer is one of the most common types of cancers in men. Usually, prostate cancer grows slowly and is initially confined only to the prostate glands for a long time, where it may not cause any serious harm. But however, harm comes when this prostate grows and blocks the urine or spreads to other parts of the body, especially the bone, especially the, your back. Uh, so most men that have experiencing low back ache, uh, we actually say every elderly man who has got low back ache has got prostate cancer until proven otherwise. That's how common it is. So better get it checked and caught early while it is still confined to the prostate gland, yeah? So as I mentioned, um, the prostate lies just below the bladder. So this is your urinary bladder. So your bladder is part of that system in your body which uh, excretes the urine out. So the kidneys filter the urine and the urine travels down uh, two, two tubes called ureters into the bladder. When the bladder is full with about four or 500 mils of urine, that's where you feel like going to the toilet and you go and empty urine. So when you empty, you empty through this tube here. Uh, we call it the urethra. And the first part of that urethra is actually formed by the prostate gland, yeah? So it's only found in men, this gland, yeah? Produces fluid that is used uh, to nourish sperms and provide a good media for the sperms to survive after ejaculation during intercourse. Um, <clears throat> so that's, that's the prostate there. That's a good diagram of the prostate there. Yeah. So you can have a tumor existing in the prostate like, the, like this yellow uh, depiction in this picture here uh, that could indicate cancer. So what are the signs and symptoms? Prostate cancer may, or may have no signs as well or symptoms in the early stages, just like cervical cancer. Uh, but later on, one can have trouble urinating. Um, trouble urinating, that's where you go to the toilet and the urine doesn't have either good flow or it's actually not coming out or it's just dribbling out, yeah? Um, one might have um, blood in their semen. During ejaculation, you notice that they could be, there are stains of blood in the ejaculum. Um, that can also indicate that it could be prostate cancer. Uh, you can also have pelvic pain, discomfort in the pelvic area, um, where you have pain just below your belly button. Um, or you can have back pain, low back pain. Like I said, low back pain in an elderly patient almost always equals to cervical cancer until proven otherwise. Uh, one can have also erectile dysfunction, where during, during intercourse, uh, one's erection is not strong enough. Yeah. 
So those are the signs and symptoms of prostate cancer. Screening, what is involved in screening for this disease? So one has to actually go and visit the doctor. There is no self-exam as in breast cancer with, cervical ca with, with, um, uh, with prostate cancer. And um, your physician will, will, will perform what is called a digital rectal examination as part of the screening, where he actually feels um, the prostate through your, your rectum with his finger. If the prostate is hard um, or, of, uh, or has got nodules in it, that increases the chances of getting prostate cancer. Um, that is that examination plus a blood test called a, called a PSA test or a prostate specific, specific antigen test um, helps the doctor to make um, a, a, a recommendation whether there is high likelihood of you having prostate cancer. That alone does not diagnose prostate cancer per se, but that helps as a screening method to determine what are the risks of you getting prostate cancer. And generally, um, this prostate-specific antigen test is measured um, from a scale from zero to over 20. Um, and generally, men should have a value of less than four, of less than four nano nanograms per meal um, of, of this process. But however, there are other things that can cause the PSA value to go up, like the examination, uh, that can, it can temporarily go up, um, as well as uh, infection in the prostate itself can also cause the, um, uh, the PSA to go up. There is also a disease that affects the prostate that is not necessarily cancer itself, that can give similar symptoms to the ones that we mentioned before, called benign prostatic hyperplasia, or a BPH. So it is usually the one that is used to, uh, that we use to distinguish whether if someone has got those urinary symptoms, whether they've got an infection in their prostate or whether they've got prostate cancer in their prostate or whether they just have a general enlargement of the prostate causing the symptom. So BPH in itself is not cancerous. Uh, it's just abnormal growth of the prostate gland itself, but which is not cancerous. And there are various ways that the doctor can use to manage that, whether with drugs or with surgery, to manage that condition. So the diagnosis of prostate cancer itself is actually made by doing an ultrasound scan of the kidneys, the ureter, as well as the prostate itself. Um, and then taking what is called a prostate biopsy. So if you're like, if from the screening, that would have been done by the examination and the PSA. If the doctor says your likelihood of getting prostate cancer is high, then he goes ahead and does an ultrasound scan on you, as well as a prostatic biopsy. A biopsy is where the doctor takes small, tiny pieces of that gland and have a pathologist to look at it under a microscope to determine whether there is cancer or not. And that has saved lives, that has saved thousands of, um, millions of lives all over the world, uh, just those simple tests. So we encourage every man from the age of 40 to have screening done. Every man from the age of 40. Other countries have recommended to have screening even from the age of 30. But we encourage every man to have a prostate cancer screen done to them every, every three years, uh, if possible, to have since from the age of, of, uh, of 40. If your father you have had head cancer, or your brother have had prostate cancer, or even breast cancer, uh, we actually find out that also um, people that have got their first degree relative that have had breast cancer can also be pre predispose them to getting uh, prostate cancer. So in such groups, individuals, it might even be wise to have prostate cancer screening right from the age of 30. Yeah. So treatment of prostate cancer also involves surgery. If it's still confined to the prostate, we remove the prostate. And there are various ways that the doctor uses to remove the prostate. And um, radiotherapy as well as chemotherapy. Uh, those are modalities for treating cancer, prostate cancer as well. So prevention of prostate cancer in involves avoidance of tobacco use, um, including cigarettes and uh, smokeless tobacco. Uh, maintaining a healthy weight, eat a healthy diet with plenty of fruits and vegetables, exercise regularly, uh, limit your alcohol intake, 
and practice self sex. Practice self sex or stick to uh, one sexual partner. Um, so those in, those um, and and <clears throat> as well as getting vaccinated against hepatitis B and uh, HPV virus. Um, uh, and reducing your exposure to radiation or out of iron radiation, uh, especially in people that use um, um, radiation in, in their workplaces. Um, avoidance of uh, air pol urban pollution uh, or indoor smoke uh, from household use of uh, uh, fossil fuels or solid fuels. Uh, getting regular medical checkups uh, and um, treatment and prevention, treatment of chronic illnesses or chronic infections also reduces one's uh, risk from getting uh, 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 cancer in general, include prostate cancer, breast cancer, as well as cervical cancer, or any other cancer in general. So all this talk about this disease and I've been talking to you about this disease and its burden. Uh, I would want to leave you there without giving you a bit of encouragement in how to live or how to live if this disease um, uh, gets to you. Uh, if you read from the book of Proverbs 24, uh, verse 5, it says, A wise man is full of strength and a man of knowledge enhances his might. So, knowledge is very important. Uh, Deuteronomy 29, 29 says, The secret things belong to our Lord God, but the things revealed belong to us and our children forever. So the things that I've talked to you about, they are revelations that have been discovered medically, and they're there for us to use so that we help prevent the burden of, of this illness. We help reduce the burden of this illness. Um, of note is that um, the five-year survival rate of common cancers is generally 64%. So that's quite a good number when you look at it. 64% um, is quite a good number to when you look at it in terms of survival uh, for, gen for cancers in general. Um, cancer sites um, for, for which survival has not improved over the past 25 years include cancer of the uterus, uh, cancer of the cervix, cancer of the larynx, cancer of the liver, the lung, the pancreas, uh, the stomach and the esophagus, especially the pancreas and the esophagus, was by the time the cancers in those areas are realized, it's usually too late to do much. Um, so there are centers and rehabilitation centers that have, been, that have been established that helps to prevent that helps to deal with uh, the disease burden. Suppose you have had cancer. There are cancer programs that are there in hospitals. Uh, there are cancer centers also where there are specialists that helps to develop your psychosocial skills. Uh, remember some of women you would have lost a breast, some would have lost a limb, uh, some would have lost part of their body from this disease. So there are rehabilitation units that have that of specialists that helps one regain their psychosocial activities as, as well as their vocational activity, as well as their physical uh, activity. So their main aim of these centers is just to optimize your social functioning. Uh, you see oncologists, radiologists, uh, you see physiotherapists, you, you see uh, your general GPs, uh, primary care physicians, so they all work in hand in hand to help you recover from this disease, as well as uh, ministers and pastors in, um, in, 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 in the hospital ministries. They also help a lot in, 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 in strengthening individuals that would have suffered this illness. Um, um, especially depression tends to be, tends to be a, a big problem if one tends to lose a limb, if one tends to lose a breast that lowers their self-esteem. So a uh, spiritual upliftment in love, faith, and hope um, is, is of benefit, yeah. And that tends to, in, to increase the survival, the survival of this individual. So generally, an individual will have to create what is called a survival plan, survivalship plan, 
that then addresses all these uh, modalities and help one function and return better to society. Um, just a look at just a, a look at a few scriptures that might also help you in your fight against this um, this illness uh, as well as prevention, mainly on prevention. When you look at it, um, first Second Peter one three says, "For His divine power is bestowed upon us absolute, uh, absolutely everything necessary for a dynamic spiritual life and godliness through the true." and personal knowledge of him who called us by his own glory and excellence. So you see, Peter is saying that God has actually given us everything that pertains unto life and godliness. So everything that pertains unto life and godliness. Cancer is a disease that takes life from people. But God comes on the other end and said he has given you everything that pertains to life and godliness. If you look at 1 Thessalonians 5.23, he says that your spirit, body, and soul be kept complete and be found blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. This scripture depicts that you as an individual, you have got three parts, the spirit, the soul, and the body. And can sometimes you affect your body mostly, but as well as your soul. Yeah, can sometimes you affect your body as well as your soul. So where does the life come from? So the life, the life-giving spirit that Christ has given us comes through the spirit. So one has to go being aware. Most of us, mostly when we are conversing and we are interacting with each other, we are mostly aware of our selves, our physical selves. But we don't acknowledge the spiritual part of us. If you read in John 3, 3, 6, he said, that which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the spirit is spirit. So you find out that you are a spiritual being who resides inside a what? Inside a body, and which has got a soul. So your spirit being is the life-giving force that can nourish your body, because God has de deposited his spirit in you, and that spirit is an immortal spirit, and it brings forth life to the body which has been riddled with cancer. So you have to keep your eyes on that which is spirit, yeah? If you, if you read from James 2.26, you said, For as the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is dead also. From this scripture, you find out the spirit is the life-giving force in that trinity that you exist as a person. The spirit, the soul, and the body. The spirit is the one that is responsible for issuing out the life. So have an acknowledgement of that you have got the spirit, the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead dwells on the inside of you. And that spirit will bring forth immortality to your mortal body. Yeah, it will revitalize your body. It will quicken your body when even if you find yourself uh, having cancer, even before even you have cancer, um, before you even have cancer, that's the God's perfect plan for you is that you don't have, you don't acquire the disease at all. Yeah. So you have to always acknowledge this life-giving spirit that is in you. Uh, in John 6, 63 also acknowledges the same thing. He says, it is the spirit who gives life, but the pr flesh profits nothing. The words that I speak to you are spirit and they are life. This was Jesus Christ conversing with his disciples when he was giving a sermon to them. And he says the spirit gives life. And that the, his words, they are the spirit uh, that rests and abides in you. So have his word in you. Uh, and that will give spirit. That will give life to you. That will give life to your mortal body. Um, in Romans 8, 6 as well, he says, For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. To be spiritually minded is life and peace. So one has to be always... Look at the spirit. The same way you look yourself in the mirror and you acknowledge that your hair is done properly, that you acknowledge that you're putting on a nice Versace suit, that you acknowledge that you're putting on nice shoes. The same way you should look into the word of God and see the reflection of Christ from that word. And that reflection of Christ in the word of God will act as a mirror to see who you are in Christ, who you are in Christ. Yeah, so be spiritual minded. Um, 
look at this scripture. This is a very interesting piece of scripture from 2 Corinthians chapter 4. Um, reading from verse 6, it reads, For God who said, let light shine out of darkness, is the one who has shone in our hearts to give us the light of the knowledge, the light of the knowledge of the glory and majesty of God, clearly revealed in the face of Christ. But we have this precious treasure, this precious treasure, the good news about the salvation in unworthy earthen vessels of human frailty, so that the grander and surpassing greatness of the power will be shown to be from God, his sufficiency and not from ourselves. We are pressured in every way, hedged in but not crushed, perplexed, unsure of finding a way out but not driven uh, to despair, hunted down and persecuted but not desert, uh, deserted, to stand alone, struck down but never destroyed, always carrying around in the body the dying of Christ, so that the resurrection life of Jesus also may be shown in our body. So we have this, we have this treasure in our body. We carry the treasure in our body. So God has deposited his spirit in us as that treasure. So as the treasure, that treasure has to be unearthed. That treasure has to be opened so that you can enjoy the benefits of this. So the only way you can open that treasure is if you spend your word in the word of Christ. And you see the reflection of Christ. You see the reflection of Christ in that word. And you see what Christ has done for you. And you acknowledge that that's what Christ has done for you. Then you'll be able to overcome the cancer that can rid your body. You can be able to overcome even the precancerous cells before you even have the cancer, before you even know that you have cancer. Uh, most of us, you could be listening to me right now. You, you, could, you, you, you could not even be aware that there is cancer working behind the scenes one day only to come out too late. Um, but having knowledge of this, having the knowledge of Christ, of his glory and his might, that you have got this treasure hidden on the inside of you. That you don't have to pray it down. You don't have to go and seek for it. But it's right on the inside of you, waiting for you just to unearth it. And when you have unearth it, you can eat the fruit of, of it. And the resurrection life of Christ will be shown manifest in your life. And you'll be able to withstand against the walls of the evil one, against this disease, against this scourge. Paul wrote to Philemon and said in Philemon 1, 6 and said uh, that um, uh, the sharing of your faith may be effective by acknowledgement of every good thing which is in you in Christ Jesus. Acknowledgement of every good thing. So you have life immortal. Yeah? The spirit of Christ that raised Christ from the dead dwells on the inside of you. You are righteous. You are, you, 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 are, you, you are righteous, you are holy, you are whole. And that wholeness is all encapsulated in your spirit, ready for you to just to unwrap. It's a present that God has given you, fully wrapped, just waiting for you to unwrap it and enjoy the fruits thereof. So I leave this word with you, that acknowledge the Christ that is in you, and you'll be able to overcome this scourge, this disease called cancer that is, uh, brought so much fear to us. For God has not given us a spirit of fear. So we have overcome this already through Christ our Lord Jesus. Now I thank you all for listening to me. Uh, I hope this teaching has brought light to you and I hope it will nourish you and help you uh, to prevent yourself from getting uh, this disease and to be, and to, to be victorious in, 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 the, in the sight of this disease. I thank you. Have a good day. Amen. Shalom.